Welcome back. In this video, we will be diving deep into the first research study we will conduct onto the regime analysis content series. So the first hypothesis that we will test is the dynamic behavior of the markets. If you recall, in previous videos, I defined dynamic behavior as a change in the returns distribution. So by relationship, the market regime is exactly the returns distribution. This means that the parameters of that distribution will tell us information about what is the expected return. We can have an idea about the probability of that return being greater or lower. Let me share some slides to continue with these explanations. Previous to jumping to talk about returns, I need to firstly explain what a representation is. I personally define a representation as the aggregation of some metric value to form a more informative feature. The most common representation of financial data that all of us know are open high, low, close bars or candles. Obviously, we get much more information from a candle than from a line graph, and we can extract much more information also from them. They give us not just the open high, low, close prices, let's call them intrinsic features, but also interrelated uh, bar information, like open of the actual bar, uh, less the uh, close of the previous bar. Let's call them extrinsic features. However, that doesn't mean that all that information will have some signal component to create alpha in our final trading strategy. Every bar representation has a threshold idea and a parameter associated to it. In terms of the threshold, we have different ways of accumulating information, such as time bars, ticks, volume, dollars, or even range. In terms of the parameter, we can adopt the position of fixing that parameter, or we can make it dynamic based on some other metric. So we actually have two degrees of freedom that start to harm our generalization abilities. Here, we, we start to end up with another dilemma. How do we want to get information from the market? From my point of view, there is a clear approach here. I want to retain all the signal, and I want to be as adaptive as possible to the ever-changing market conditions. Why? It's just because I maybe don't want to trade in range markets, let's say, not much volatility there to profit, or I want to decrease my position size during certain specific more volatile market regime, or I want to adjust my risk parameters based on that specific regime. The common practitioner approach here is to create fixed time threshold based bars, or let's call it them like uh, all of us know time bars. If we fix the threshold parameter, we are not changing dynamically our information retrieval rate depending on the market conditions, which makes final trading strategy not being as robust as an adaptative uh, as we want it to be for that primary reason. It is clear that it's not the optimal approach for extracting alpha on the markets. With the dynamic view, we can extract much more data in the process of creating our representations, and we will see that onto the following videos. That's the first point. So the second point is that aggregating information based on some time-based threshold doesn't connect well with the fundamentals of the markets. Information arrival, or better say, participant interaction, it's time independent. So it is not a good idea to fix or create our representations based on time. But be careful and hold on here because we don't want to mix this with that time is important in terms of information retrieval rate. The key takeaway is that it is really important to decide how we create our representations so that we are able to extract as much information as possible from the markets and at the same time be as fast as possible to adapt to those market conditions and finally also adapt our decision making. The return metric, that is the normalization difference we apply to the price metric, will be actually derived from our representations as time-stamped sequential observation series, resulting in some X distribution that will serve as one of the main sources of information for our decision making. So now let's get back to my production environment and see some code. 
Returning to the hypothesis definition at the beginning of the video, we will plot the distributions and returns of five minute time bars. To get going with this research study, we have to consider a look back window, which in this case is all the date range period we have. So let's click on the play button here on Visual Studio Code. And we will start to see uh, different plots. So these plots are saved as images in the plots test folder. Okay. What you see in the returns plot are just the returns plotted counting the observations. You can see all the returns plots for the different assets of our portfolio. And we can start to see that dynamic behavior in these plots. As you can see also, I have plotted the probability density functions of different distributions to start getting a grasp about what we will talk about in the following videos. Do you, do you start to note that the normal distribution may not be the best fit for returns calculated from time bars? Let's pass it so that we can see a bit more of that. Now, let's see what happens if I plot a rolling mean and a standard deviation on a look-back period of, let's say, 100 data points. We have uncommented this line right here to generate the rolling mean. And I have also added the parameter rolling mean or not and pass it a true to the plot returns. I have also commented the plot distribution to not even bother with those plots that won't add any value here. So let's click onto the play on Visual Studio Code. As we can see here, the rolling mean values change, both for the mean, not that much, but uh, well, not that much, and from the standard deviation, showing that there is not just one distribution, but many there, resulting in different market regimes. Let's go through the different assets, and we can start devising the same behavior on all of them. And here, how about if we put another parameter on that lookback period to compute the rolling calculations? Let's try it with 40. We can go down below here and change this method and put a rolling window of 40. Let's control S to save it and let's hit the play button. In this case, it also showcases dynamic behavior, meaning that depending on that look back period, we get a different rate of that dynamic component. If we go and see other components of the portfolio, we will see the same exact behavior like have a lot of standard deviation here that then normalizes a bit, but then we go up again, and that can be seen just not by looking at the rolling means or rolling standard deviations, but just by looking at the graph and taking the approximate observations for the calculation. So my take on this is that the hypothesis of that markets are dynamic is confirmed and that we have to account not only for that dynamic uh, behavior, but also for a rate parameter of that dynamic component. It changes and it changes at a variable rate, let's say. You can even tweak the date ranges to download different data and get different ones and check if, if it exhibits the same behavior. That's all for this production. In the following video, we will jump into more sophisticated approaches representation approaches and talk about more the intuition on them and how they serve as better starting points to create our models. Furthermore, the more sophisticated representation that I will walk through in the following video showcase interesting statistical properties. You can find down below all the code in the GitHub repository associated to it and be sure to stay tuned.